Hello, my name is Chris Kiak and I am a steel construction technology consultant. And in this video, we are going to talk about augmented reality. And there are two different main types. There is the traditional mobile device type, which you see on the left, uh, where if you have a data phone or an iPad, uh, you can basically use that device to overlay digital assets and align them uh, into the real world. Uh, this has got a lot of consumer applications today. Uh, you see previews of furniture or certain things that you're going to buy and place in your home or your office. And it's very easy to get started because a lot of us all have mobile phones as well as tablets. Now, over on the right, we have a little bit of a different workflow uh, in augmented reality or what is often coined as mixed reality. And I'm using a Microsoft HoloLens 2 headset. And so this is hands-free in the sense that uh, the digital assets are being shown to me overlaid in the real world um, directly in front of my eyes and in, in the headset. And then that leaves my hands free to be able to move around and interact with the holograms or to do other types of work. And this is especially important in construction. So today I'm actually going to be showcasing a little bit more on the, uh, the mixed reality side. So with the HoloLens, but I'm going to briefly show uh, the augmented reality app and we are going to be leveraging Trimble Connect today. Now, Trimble Connect, I'm very familiar with this. I actually used to work with the Trimble team um, and also just very familiar with this uh, platform because of my uh, exposure in Tecla structures on the steel detailing front. And uh, both Tecla structures and Trimble Connect are owned by the same parent company, Trimble. And essentially, I've been very familiar with workflows for the past six or seven years uh, related to getting 3D models um, out of the detailing office or the design office and bringing those 3D models out uh, to project managers, out to the job site, or in the fabrication shop. Now, the barrier has uh, constantly been getting folks to learn how to leverage uh, and navigate those 3D models, either in a web browser, a desktop application, or even in mobile applications and being able to navigate the model. This augmented reality technology takes that to a different level because we're going to be uh, allowing basically uh, field personnel and shop personnel and project managers who are not traditionally BIM or CAD people to basically consume those 3D models in easier to use technology environments. All right, so how, do I, how did I get started with this and do this test? Well, essentially I needed to get a 3D model of my house here because that's where I'm working right now and I needed some sort of digital asset that uh, could be aligned with my current work environment here at home. And so essentially I did some field measuring there. I whipped up a Tecla Structures model, and then I essentially published an IFC file uh, up to Trimble Connect in the cloud, which again, I could view that 3D model here, for instance, in the web browser, a desktop application, and then there is a traditional um, mobile application where you can view and navigate the 3D model um, on your mobile phone. The mobile phone augmented reality is different because uh, the key difference there is I'm actually overlaying the 3D models and seeing in the background the real world. Whereas the traditional 3D viewer on mobile is actually just looking purely at the 3D environment and nothing overlaid in the real world. So just an important thing to understand the difference between Trimble Connect Mobile and then Trimble Connect for augmented reality. All right, so why do we need to use augmented reality in construction and why does it matter? Well, the first thing is, is that you are seeing something before you actually build it. Now, right now, um, even out on site, no matter what trade you're in, we are still building and manufacturing things off of 2D drawings. Um, there are CNC machines that do a lot of work as well, especially in the shop environment. And we're seeing more and more robotics and things out in the field. But hands down, uh, a lot of people are still working off of 2D drawings. And different trades are working off of information from the overall design on different sets of 2D drawings. And so a big struggle for general contractors is actually going out there, looking at daily work tasks and packages, coordinating different subcontractors working in the same area, making sure that they're working on the right stuff, the right scope, and in the right order. Now, if you imagine it, like if you're a site superintendent for a GC, you can go out there and you can talk to folks and you can bring out your phone, uh, show the digital models uh, you know, already aligned and overlaid, and then you can talk in 3D with folks exactly in the environment where they're going to start building and working on that day's worth of work. And so this has just got a lot of benefits in preventing rework. Um, so many times GCs are struggling with the chaos that's kind of, you know, or what I call controlled chaos out on the job site. And essentially, they are spending a lot of their time solving problems, you know, fighting fires. But if they can go out there and communicate uh, before problems happen, you're saving a lot of time and schedule and cost uh, that typically happens from WeWork. Now, the other major thing here is that 
Um, if you're a GC especially, or if you're a site superintendent, you know, overseeing a team or a squad, you get instant verification of the scope of work that you've done and you actually have proof that you did it. So what's great is you can actually see the digital assets overlaid of what you're supposed to be delivering, especially in those work packages uh, or for that day. Um, you can see that work, you can showcase and overlay the digital design with the actual work that you've done. And uh, you can send that and take pictures and create to do's of that information and send that back uh, to the project manager and the GC um, to showcase what's actually been done and tie that to your schedule of values. Now, what's great about this is again, also you got folks walking around the job site doing nothing other than uh, tracking progress, right? Especially for accounting purposes and um, ensuring that the reporting from subcontractors and everything is correct um, and accurate. And so being able to see the digital assets overlaid with the 3D uh, or with the real world uh, gives instant verification that, hey, yeah, the stuff that they said they're, they're doing is there and it is correct because uh, I can roughly see what was designed and supposed to be worked on is overlaid in the, in the real world. All right. So enough about the background. I just wanted to give some information and history of why AR, what, what does it mean to you before just showing the cool tech in the application. And so hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into that. But let's go ahead and dive in uh, to the mobile app first. And again, that's going to be very brief. And then we will do a deeper demonstration of the uh, HoloLens mixed reality uh, environment. All right, so here I'm on my iPhone and I can control the transparency settings to look more at either the digital assets or the real world. And um, you know, it's very easy to load the models um, and then do manual alignment. So here I'm actually just doing vertical, I can do rotation and in and out uh, offsets to line up the model. And I'll let it loop here one more time. Um, you can also use QR codes. So you can print out QR codes, place them at different locations in the job site. And uh, that will uh, match locations in the 3D model to tell the model where to be at uh, in relation to the QR code on the job site. So there's a couple, couple different options there. So we're here within Trimble Connect and essentially I've gone inside of my project called Kiak Tech Office. I see the IFC model that I published. I'm just gonna go ahead and tap on that. And then you'll see here that there is the ability to say launch. And so we'll just go ahead and press the launch button. Now what it's gonna do is um, it'll then load up the model for me here. And uh, the first thing it's gonna actually do is it's gonna try to calibrate uh, to the environment, the physical environment. And uh, basically what it's gonna ask me to do is, well, hey, where do you want to actually place the model? I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on the floor here as a starting point. And uh, I can roughly see that it's already pretty close to being aligned to where I'm already at. Now, if you look at this, um, what is really neat is that I can actually, uh, you can scale this. So if you just pinch, um, you can scale um, and resize this. I, I do like this initial sort of, um, kind of like what I call God view, um, or basically like overall site view. It allows you to kind of walk around and see things and talk about things, especially if you do a collaboration session. You can actually collaborate with um, where more than one person in the same location or more than one person in different locations, remote locations can actually look at the model and uh, show each other what they're looking at here. Seeing it from an overall plan point of view lets me kind of get a full digestion of the site. Uh, but what we're really going to do here is we're going to do a quality control review by aligning this and uh, going into street view. So uh, the menu is pretty nice here, the wheel menu, and then basically we can do navigate and we can say street view. And so basically what you do is you'll see the little icon uh, pop into the actual uh, room or building itself. We'll just tap and it brings us in there. And now we are life size. We'll go back to the menu and then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna go to the align. The responsiveness on the tools is really fantastic. Um, everything's really nice and clean here. Um, I'm gonna use this very basic plane. Say connect done or air tap to complete the spatial mapping. Okay, so again, the calibration and the spatial mapping. And I'm just going to say uh, air tap. Air tap on the first wall. Okay. So then I will just tap. Air that tap wall there. on the corresponding wall in the model. Okay. So when I look in my actual project here, uh, the model that I or the wall that I just picked on was air that tap one. on the second wall. There's air tap wall. on the corresponding wall in the model. I'll just go ahead and uh, use the auto detection on the. Floors. Model aligned successfully. Look at that. Pretty pretty good. Looks like uh, because I was in the other room, the elevation of my floor level is a little bit uh, incorrect, and you can see that it's it's actually um, a little bit too low on the opening. 
but from a corners location point of view, everything is good. And then you can actually go into the align, um, and then you can come in here and actually use fine tune, um, which is pretty cool. So you can actually uh, just pick a location, and then what's great is you can actually uh, just grab this and then move it up and down. So I can kind of look and see, oh, all right, we're still a little bit off there, but then that looks just about right. Then if I need to go left and right, if like the intersections aren't quite 100%, then I can easily move that. And then once we're done, again, we can always uh, just say that we are all set. So I'll just say exit, and then everything's all done. Cool. So then, you know, what's, what's fantastic is I can just start to walk around and look at the model. Um, you can control transparency settings. So um, this is one thing I would say is that in augmented reality, especially a mixed reality where you're fully immersed, um, and you see the digital model with the real world. Sometimes um, it just depends on the scenario that you're, you're trying to do. So if you're actually trying to do a sort of scope verification and sort of ensure that whatever the digital model um, has actually been done in the real world and real scope, sometimes you actually want to change the transparency um, so that way it's not overwhelming. So let's just go to uh, Explore and then we'll go to Visibility. And so there's this ability to, to somewhat change, essentially, the transparency and opacity of the model. So like you can kind of see more of either the real world or you can see more of the digital world, um, depending on the work case scenario that you're working with. And you can turn on different trades and different models that you've loaded. So this is cool, too, is you can see multiple trades, multiple models um, you know, that are stored on Trimble Connect there and view all of them or turn certain trades and things on and off. So really great controls that way. Um, I'm not going to show this all in this video, but there is also a whole slew of things like um, collaboration. So if I go to this option, what that means is I can do a co-located meeting or a remote meeting. So co-located is where we're both in the same site. Um, basically, I could be looking at something and then um, we're essentially working in the same environment. Um, and that also means that the model is scaled and we're looking at the same thing in the same location. That's why there's two separate ones. Because if somebody's in a different room, remote location, their room and their space that they're looking at the model is different than what mine is. And so we can still follow and look, um, see where we're looking at the model, but the placement controls are separate in this remote option here. Um, you know, there's all sorts of really neat uh, tools as well, like um, you can do to-dos, uh, which is basically kind of like issue tracking and things like that, and tie that back to the desktop software. So that way you could send uh, you know, problems or field issues and questions back to the, uh, either the job site trailer or the design office. Um, and then what's really cool too is there's a sequencing option. I haven't really set that up here. Um, but basically uh, what you would do is you could say um, sort of showing an animation like a 4D step by step with some instructions and kind of saying exactly how a build order is or certain instructions for trades. Um, let me give you a good example where that makes sense. Work packages. So if you have daily work packages for subcontractors, you're trying to give them sequences of information, show them a workflow of exactly what they're going to be building and doing for that day. That's where sequencing comes in. So I really got to give it to Trimble Connect. I mean, a lot of uh, it's not just visualization and overlay of the digital asset into the into the you know the real world. It truly is a workflow system with all of these additional tools. Um, for coordination and collaboration um, beyond just looking at the model. So, you know, this takes it to the next level of instead of being in a, you know, 2D screen environment, looking at a 3D model and having to have a BIM person, you know, who specialized in navigating 3D models, you as a construction person can just put, you know, either the HoloLens on or you can have your phone in front of you looking at exactly what's going on, not having to have this technical ability to learn how to navigate models and just walk around. And I got to tell you, as a experienced steel detailer, I've done a bunch of virtual reality and augmented reality reviews where I just see stuff from some, some of the, my detailers. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, that's going to be a code problem, like especially with stairs and rails. There's just something about catching and seeing things in a digital review um, in a life-size environment compared to doing it in a just looking at a 2D screen or even a projector alone, um, you just get a true feel for exactly what the design intent is and you just see things uh, that you can't see on a 2D screen alone. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Trimble, for uh, giving me uh, the ability to take a look at um, the AR as well as the HoloLens Mixed Reality options here. Um, it is an extra pay option beyond the standard Trimble Connect that uh, you know a lot of Tecla Structures users, for instance, is, uh, have uh, as a base part of their kind of maintenance in their offering. Um, so it is an added product, but boy, uh, just think of all of the issues uh, and rework costs. I mean, that could be tens of thousands of dollars and delays on stuff if things are done wrong that could be prevented, um, you know, with this type of technology. Great stuff. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.